I'm happy. I decked out the classroom. Yay, deck the halls, deck the class. Hello everyone and welcome to Monday, December 2nd and the second day of Vlogmas. Today we are in my classroom and I'm coming to you during our specials time. This morning when I came in, I absolutely forgot to buy gift wrapping paper because I want to do the same thing that I did last school year, which was read a holiday book on different kinds of holidays every day from the first week of december till we go to holiday break so it'll be 15 days of picture books and i will wrap each and every one of those picture books now these are books that are already in my library but i went ahead and put them to the side and i will wrap them up and select a random student to come to the front of the classroom and unwrap it to read to the students. And what I mean by read to the students, the student will unwrap it and I will read the book to the class. But I realized this morning that I did not have gift wrapping paper, but that's okay. I went to our production room in the school and I got some butcher paper. So I decided to do light blue and I went ahead, cut it apart, got my scissors, got my tape, and started wrapping the book away and once i was done wrapping it mind you i am not the best wrapper but it was done i went ahead and started getting our holiday decorations out so i started taking out a couple of things because specifically i was looking for our little christmas tree and our little menorah now i have a couple of different christmas trees but i was looking for one specific one that i do put lights on but then again i do also can put lights on the other ones that I have. But anyway, I digress. So I was starting to decorate the classroom. Now I didn't finish. I went ahead and did some decorations here and there. I went ahead and did put the Christmas tree out with our menorah and our little Santa. I also went ahead and put our little, if I already showed the clips, I'm just getting ahead of myself. I put my Mary everything, which is a light up sign that I have to put the batteries in. And I also put my little Frosty that is how many days until Christmas. And those are the little bits of decorations that I was able to do this morning since I didn't have a lot of time. So after school, after the students are dismissed, I'm gonna go ahead and put more decorations out. But yeah, once I had the tree out with the menorah and Santa, I placed the book there. And then I had a student randomly selected. I actually use an app called Teachers Pick HD on my iPad and I have all the students on digital craft sticks and I selected a random student and she unwrapped the book, which was all about Diwali. I'll give you a close up look on the book in a moment. And I read the book to the class to introduce them to Diwali, which is an Indian festival of lights. So let me show you that cover right now. This is the book. I did find this on Amazon. These are the authors. And it's just such a beautiful book that goes over the five days of Diwali and the tradition that is celebrated with this holiday. The students loved it. We read the book after the students finished with their part one of their iReady diagnostic because yes, it's the first week of December. That means it's AP2 for iReady. So my students started taking their reading diagnostic this morning. I went ahead and I gave each of them a little post-it with their name and their AP1 overall level and scale score and how many points they need to get to the next level so that they have a clear focus on their goals on how they want to perform on this particular assessment. So tomorrow we'll do part two of reading. Hopefully everyone can finish tomorrow. And then on Wednesday, we'll start with math and hopefully be done by Thursday, the latest Friday, if I have a few students I still need to finish. So yeah, so we read the book after that and then it was time for lunch. And then after lunch, we went ahead and we worked on some social studies. So today we're still going over chapter three, how geography impacts or affects life in the Southeast. And I wanted them to do some doodle notes. So on the board, I wrote some elements for doodle notes that I just came up with myself, just to kind of give them a guideline on what they can use and include in their doodle notes. So this is what I put up on the board. So I titled this Doodle Notes Elements and I started here off to the side with the different kinds of bullets that students can use when they're making a bulleted list 
of information. And also I went over lettering style because I want the headings to stand out and it be a little bigger than the regular text. And I gave them some ideas for different kinds of heading here. I also make sure to tell them to include iconic pictures or simple doodles. Iconic because I just want them to use icons whenever possible. We're not here to make elaborate drawings, but enough that can fill the page and be meaningful to the content. I also tell them sometimes we can put borders around specific type of information, especially if we have different sections of information. And I told them to include important vocabulary words along with main ideas and important key details. So this is what I started with this morning. I have my doodle notes here somewhere. I think I put them in, yeah, I put them inside my, my textbook. So I gave them some guidance with two different sections and then tomorrow the plan is for them to work on the remaining four sections on their own to have them make their own doodle notes. So here's what I kind of gave them as a model. So this is a chapter we are reading in our social studies textbook. We had already gone over the introduction. So today we were going over elevation, lowlands and highlands and how that affects life in the Southeast. So I had them first think about the title of the chapter and put it in a specific layout. And then think about the six different parts that we're going to be including in our doodle notes. So this is for elevation and these are the most important points for that area. And then the next section we were going over rivers and oceans and how those are important and how they affect life in the Southeast, including Miami, which we live in. And the students didn't know that it's known as the gateway of the Americas because it's one of the biggest ports in the Southeast. And it's also known as the cruise capital of the world. So for this one, I did more doodling than writing, but we did write some key important words. We showed how the rivers flow, depending on which direction they're going, and the cruises and the ships and how Miami is known, and basically how the rivers and oceans are used for fun and transportation. So then we will work on the fall line, natural resources, a long growing season, and dangerous weather, and that will wrap up our doodle notes for this chapter. I'm curious to see how the students end up progressing through the doodle notes and how they complete theirs. So let's see how it goes. So then we went ahead and started math. Today we started with chapter six on equivalent fractions and we were modeling different ways to write equivalent fractions. They took their homework, they went to PE, and now after PE I have two more students that still need to present their natural disasters projects because we just didn't have time last week because it's such a short week and we were trying to do all the other things. So they're gonna present and then we're gonna move into weathering and erosion. So I'll let you know how the rest of the day goes with science after the students are dismissed, along with showing you the other extra decorations that I will be placing around the classroom. All right, so it's time to pick up the kids and bring them back in so we can continue learning. So I will catch up with you at the end of the day. It's now the end of the day and after PE, two of my last students were able to present. One presented on tornadoes and the other one presented on floods. And then it was time for the rest of our science time, which is making a magic book on weathering, erosion, and deposition. So I showed the students how to make it and then I had them do it themselves, walking them step by step how to make it. And if you have never seen the magic book before, I think there's a video where I show you how to make it step by step. If I can remember which video that is, I'll link it down below. But this is the magic book. Now, I just worked on it after dismissal, writing the other information that I want the students to make sure they include in theirs tomorrow and throughout the week. But this is basically how it looks. So this is the magic book. So right now it's vertical. So it goes like that for now. And I'll show you why. So weathering it and I kind of drew an image similar to the one that I created on a little anchor chart that I made for the science notebooks last year, which I lost and I have to recreate. I actually hand drew this on the board and digitally and I had a little anchor chart that I had and it's in my Instagram from last year. So if you want to go to Pencils and Magic Wands and in Instagram, you can kind of go back and see that post. But here's weathering, so the rain, all that stuff. Weather is the rock, these are pieces of rock. Erosion moves it, so this is like a waterfall that then turns into a river. And then we have deposition where the particles are deposited. Now, here is the magic book, so I'm just gonna open it. And right here, the students in the white spot, so they had to choose two different colors to weave through the magic book. And basically, this is a 12 by 18 piece of paper. We fold it in half first like a booklet and then opened it, fold the flaps to the center fold. 
and then it created like a mountain peak and then since we needed three different flaps because we're dealing with three different concepts i had them cut their papers into thirds and then get two strips of paper to weave in different color and this one happened to be four and a half each wide and they're going to write weathering on the white spots erosion and deposition and this is how the magic book works so let me just show you the back there is nothing in the back although you could potentially have students on the back maybe answer questions and stuff but there's information in the magic door which i can just open like this and this gives you more information on weathering so weathering breaks it which is the process that wears away or breaks down rocks erosion which moves it the process in which weather particles are removed from land by rivers streams precipitation waves wind glaciers or gravity and then deposition drops it which is the setting of particles moved by wind water ice or gravity which builds new landforms such as deltas canyons etc so that is their magic book and if you want to go back to the magic book itself you pull these flaps i need to use both hands but hold on Oh, I wish I had that in like a tripod so you can see it. You pull the flaps back opposite direction so that you're back to this. And then you can close this up. And yeah, that is our magic book. If I can close it up. That they are creating on weathering, erosion, and deposition. I also took some time. I found my screwdriver and my extension cord for my Christmas tree. Because this morning I couldn't plug it in so the lights can turn on. Because I couldn't find my extension cord, but I found it. I found my screwdriver and I turned on the Mary Everything sign that I got from Target last year. I put the batteries in. So let me show you that right now. So here's the little Christmas tree all lit up. Super cute. And here's the Mary Everything sign that I put the batteries on. And when I leave, I just turn it off and we're good to go. But for now, I just wanted to turn it on because it's so adorable. We can already move this to, what, 22 days left as of tomorrow until Christmas. So, yep. And now I have a couple of other decorations that I'm going to put around the classroom library. So let me go ahead and do that right now. And that is it. I am done placing all the decorations I'm going to place right now. I mean, later on, I will decorate our kidney table with a tablecloth that's holiday inspired, a little Frosty the Snowman, and a bowl full of ornaments and things like that, because that's the table we're going to use for different activities that we'll be doing from now until the kids go on break. But I'm happy. I decked out the classroom. Yay. Deck the halls. Deck the class. I hope you enjoyed coming along with me for my Vlogmas Day 2. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button, leave a comment down below, and let me know what you thought or any questions you may have. Also, if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell for notifications so you don't miss any future videos. I hope you have a beautiful, magical day, and don't forget to smile. Hello dreamers, wishers, and magical thinkers. Thank you so much for making it to the very end of this video and for showing your support. If you'd like to subscribe, you can do so by clicking on my picture down here. You can also check out my latest videos here and here. Don't forget to believe in the magic that's inside you because you are capable of great things. See you next time.